good morning, good morning, Curtis, and everyone else listening. <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, it's been a wonderful week. It's been good. It's been tough, but, you know, it's been good. How's your week been? Oh, pretty good. I don't think I can complain too much. Well, you had a, a big week because it was your uh, better half's birthday yesterday. Yes. You know what? Um, time keeps on ticking on, and <laughs> well, we celebrated his birthday yesterday. I can't believe um uh, just how quickly the time goes by, but we had a great day. It was actually, the weather was really good yesterday, and, and it was a great day. Um, we had to do the self-isolation thing, but we were able to uh, work it out and make it a good day for him, so it was fun. That's the important thing. Yeah, you still got to find a way to celebrate, right? It was my niece's birthday on Monday. Uh, she turned uh, four, Aww. so it was the same thing. We had to, uh, you know, find ways to, to to celebrate for her too, and uh, maybe not the birthday she was expecting, but uh, you know what? She did okay. Well, we don't celebrate things enough. I find out. You know, I just feel like you know every day should be a celebration that we're we're alive. But you know, really celebrating the the things in life that really are worth celebrating, especially birthdays, right? So it's, I, I, I love making them like big spectacles or like, you know, really, really spending the whole day and making it great. But um, yeah, it, it, it was a lot of fun. So were you able to do a FaceTime with your niece? Yeah, or? we did a little, uh, we did a little Zoom FaceTime thing, you know, all the family with her and stuff like that. The good thing is when they're that young, they won't really remember that their birthday was all messed up. So <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Okay, I got to ask you, did you download and did you put the Star Wars behind your Zoom? They they got the coolest. You like you like Star Wars. I they do. Have these, they have these cool backgrounds for your video calls and your meetings. You can actually download it and then put it up behind you. <laughs> no, I haven't done that yet. I just actually I just heard about that the other day. My friend told me about that and I'm like, I got to do this, but I haven't done it yet, but you can count on I will. <laughs> It's, it's fun. I was having fun. I've been having fun on the Zoom calls. I'll put like a Western log house behind me and then I'll put on my cowboy hat and I'll act all like I'm country. And then and then I'll have like a dance, like a, a globe in the back, like it's a night a life, like a nightclub. And I'll, I'll have my like shiny sequins hat on and then I'll like put on my blonde long wig on another scene with, you know, so I've been having a lot of fun dress ups with the different backgrounds. So nice. Like that. <laughs> fun absolutely now i you know here's the thing i understand that uh things have slowed down a bit in the real estate world but really i i understand you've been busy as ever oh my goodness it, it you know a, yes a lot of uh you know there's been a little bit of not i, I don't want to say complications but just there's a lot of um high emotions and intensity and uh there is still it's not really the fear i see out there but a lot of questions and a lot of high anxiety and then and then some some i had one thing i did want to say okay we're going to talk about service providers um and this didn't this came up after um i wanted to talk about this this week and then the second segment we're going to come back with last week's new listings and sold um to the previous weeks to keep an eye on the weekly update as we've been doing here. But I, you know what, when it's in a contract to purchase and sell that the seller uh, says they will professionally clean the house, you know, they're signing to it. They're promising it. They're saying, yes, I will do that. And then if that they don't, when it comes to possession day and the buyer, we show up and, and it's dusty and it's dirty and there's smears and it's just, it, it's dirty and, and, and I don't want to say they use the excuse that it's COVID-19 and they couldn't find a cleaner to do it. But I made one call instantly and she said, yep, I can be there today. So <laughs> I just, you know, service, that, that is not really a service provision providing, but it's just care and love for your fellow man. It's just, you know, you promise to do something, you should follow through and do it. Um, your your reputation and what, the, what you leave for, whether you're a seller, doing that to your buyer you want to you want to hopefully give the buyer a good experience and um, everyone should want to you know care for each other I think that's really important um, when you promise to do something or when somebody's paying you uh, for something uh, then you, you should do it right yeah absolutely and I'm sure that that's one thing that has become a little more uh, time consuming now than it would be in the past to get those services provided get all the things taken care of all the eyes cross and the t's dotted no that's backwards you know what i mean uh i'm sure getting all the little things like that might be a little more time consuming now but they can still get done they can absolutely yeah and like 
just knowing the right people, just taking the time to, to do things. But you know what? Yeah, service providers. Now, I've found, though, um, you know, the, going to that, now, for years, it's been really hard to find. I've gone through, I, for years and years, I've seeked out good service providers, and I have found really good ones, and I have been loyal. I've stuck with them. They, you, like, you notice they shine so bright because they're, it's so rare, at few and far between, that you actually find a service provider that knows they're in the service of providing for you. You're the one hiring them, right? Not not that you owe them, but that they owe you because you're the one paying them. Uh, so, like, in a recent new client this week, I received um, actually truly interviewed me for the job. And, you know, a lot of times I get referred or, you know, others, uh, clients have used me, so they refer me. Neighbors refer me. Uh, they see my signs. They see they, they, they see me out there, um, all my advertising and marketing, and, uh, you know, but when they really, truly interview me, it's it's quite exciting. <laughs> um, and, and he did. He truly interviewed me for the job of being his realtor, and he had many reasons why he didn't want to just jump into it. He said that he's had a really hard time finding a true service provider, and that made me start thinking again of this. Um, once he saw how I... And, and my group, like my assistants and associate, uh, helping him with his uh, value. I helped him with his evaluation. Um, I followed up quickly and responded to information. I provided value to him. I listened to his needs and his wants. Um, I asked questions to, to help be, better uh, service him. And just getting back to his emails really quickly, very timely fashion, the communication is so important, and he truly, really appreciated it. And he said he's been through a lot of realtors. He himself has been looking for a while for a place, and he's uh, – found a place, but the realtor wasn't getting back to him. It took two weeks before mm. the realtor actually got back to him on this one place that he really, really liked. And he was so frustrated. And, you know, I, I hear that um, a lot, you know, uh, there's there's always some bad apples in, in the bunch. <laughs> and uh, But for example, this one place, okay, he, 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 it, it, he emailed a few times. Uh, and it was just the other day, actually, like two days after I started communicating with him and he reached out to me, uh, that, that I, I actually called on that realtor instantly. That realtor called me back. So I got a response, but for some reason, he didn't get a response. And I find that that actually happens, um, uh, you know, there's a couple of reasons. One reason is that uh, there's so many leads that maybe realtors get, and he actually had an accepted offer, so it was still subject, though, and it had a 48-hour clause on it. So he could have actually got another offer. Uh, it could have been better than the current one, and, and maybe his sellers uh, would have been able to be released from that current offer and get the better uh, offer. So, you know, he should have really responded to him, right? It's just the professional thing to do, but but um, I, I find that sometimes I'll get a response quicker than when buyers uh, inquire, and maybe it's just because there's a lot of buyers out there that will just inquire but not want to give any information, and, and they're just kind of, they're not pre-approved yet at all, and, and looking like like, um, there are a lot, I don't want to say looky lose, but those who are just kind of, you know, just window shopping, and uh, so, uh, you know, the response of some realtors, especially if they have an accepted offer, sometimes isn't the quickest. So I, I hear that that's a frustrating thing for for um, buyers out there. And I know that the real estate board doesn't put pending on the listings on the MLS. So it's really hard for them to know, you know, what is it? Is it sold? Is there an accepted offer? What is it? So uh, that kind of information uh, makes it tough. So to hire a real a professional realtor to help you as a buyer will go a long way. Um, as a buyer, you want to hire a realtor to do the inquiries for you to do that work, get that respect from the the realtor uh that knowing that you're a serious buyer you're working with the realtor which means you're, you should be pre-approved and you're ready to go you will get a quicker response it's just how how it is and that way you don't waste your time doing everything that your realtor should and will be doing for you um so let me say this don't be afraid to hire a realtor to help you find your home Start a partnership with a realtor you trust. You'll be more than glad you did. Uh, your expertise and the knowledge, uh, their advice to give to you, you'll grow in your knowledge. And the time that you'll save and the stress that you save as well is worth the zero dollars you pay them. In essence, it's priceless. 
because buyer's agents, you don't pay them. They get paid through the transaction. The seller and the listing agent decides what the buyer's agent gets paid. So you don't pay your realtor, but they do get paid at the end of the day. So really, it's priceless. Um, so different ways to uh, servicing uh, customers um, doesn't mean less value nowadays. Now, we're moving on to kind of what we're kind of sixth episode here of the COVID-19 and and I've lots of people piano uh, teachers guitar teachers lots of music teachers plus uh, you know educational teachers uh, of all sorts a lot of things have been going online with the zoom meetings and everything like that you've had a lot of uh, meetings this week Curtis Um, and so just the different ways that people can still provide service without being physically in front of you and I know um, a couple people have said oh well uh, then it's not worth as much because you don't have to drive out here or we're not actually physically seeing you. But the value that they're providing is, isn't anything excuse me, less, right? Exactly. So, yeah, so just realizing, you know, somebody doesn't have to be physically. Why does that make them more valuable that they're physically there if they're still, if they're providing really good value? So that's where it comes down to and, and think of that. Uh, so I wanted to move into prices that, Right now, they still really haven't gone down. Um, uh, we, we are, like I said, about six weeks or so into this. So uh, we paused. The economy has paused. The, the, the real estate uh, sales have really slowed down and in some areas paused. Uh, but people, you know, it, it, they're, they're thinking that prices should be lower, some buyers. So what I've noticed in the market this last uh, week especially, um, maybe week and a half or two, uh, has been that some buyers are kind of going in there trying to find a deal, trying to find that, oh, I want, I want to lowball. <laughs> and sellers are like, well, no, uh, we're going to be out of this soon. And everyone has great expectations that the market's going to come back very strongly, pent up demand, and it's going to be really good. And it's not that far away. And I think real estate's is going to be one of the first things out there um, that comes back strong and, and quicker. It was, the, it was one of the last things to slow down, and it's going to be one of the first ones out of the gate to, to start getting busy again. So um, we talked a little bit about last week. Uh, wanted to talk further about a few things. I've got four points. One is, and this is in regards to people that are having maybe a hard time who have lost their jobs. They're kind of looking um, – unknowingly of what's going to happen in the next few months uh, and you know of course you can't ask for a delay up to six months on your mortgage um, most people can um, but two the best thing to do in, in my opinion for most people if you can is refinance your current property and mortgage right now if you have any uh, equity uh, you can go up to 80 percent of borrow borrowed equity from your property with the lower rates today with the variable rate, it's an amazing opportunity to do that and to get some extra funds to carry you through this time. Uh, and consolidate if you can, if you have some consumer de- debt, you know, consolidate it when you're refinancing. Three, if you don't take advantage of the low variable interest rates and in refinancing your property now before it's too late, because either you do lose your job soon or this goes further and the banks decide not to refinance anymore because they are changing their minds. Um, it, it, you know, every day things are changing, right? Um, and the qualification gets harder. And if you're gone after the six months and you still can't afford a mortgage, you know this, it takes months and months and months for the banks uh, to, for, you know, they don't want to foreclose. They learned their lesson back in 2008. Um, you know, they, they they don't want people to foreclose. They, it's, that's not what they're after here. So, uh, you know, trying to work with them uh, is, is a good idea. But, you know, person wouldn't allow uh, their their to be foreclosed on if they're able if the market's good uh they're able to as uh, prices haven't gone down uh you know it just takes a little longer to sell possibly however uh, i just had multiple offers on a listing i took on friday i uh, had four offers and three of them were over asking and just yesterday um a buyer of mine who we just saw a place on thursday night the next morning we knew somebody else was interested and sure enough multiple offers so in some places there's still multiple offers happening so that shows a strong market. So my point number four is, can you imagine if things are so bad and people have lost their jobs or in businesses haven't invented new jobs or haven't created new jobs or haven't 
gone back to the job that they previously had, uh, allowing themselves to just sit around and do nothing in a world with endless possibilities, that's hard for me to imagine. I mean, it is, you, you can get depressed and you can get down, but I just hope people don't. I hope they, they, they get energized by it instead and saying, you know what, I'm going to make this better. Um, to get into the position where they're I mean, I, I would hate to see people to get in the position where their credit is bad, right? Um, and, and they have to be foreclosed because I think people can get out of that, um, call for help, reach out for help. Uh, there, 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 there are people who can help. Um, and, and again, like I said, the, the foreclosures, they, they don't want the foreclosures. So, um, you know, keep in communication. That is the biggest thing. I know it is the biggest thing with banks is that when you uh, communicate with your bank, that is what they need. And I've seen it before, and it really does help. So don't let the fear make you ignore it um, and not communicate because you may be fearful. It's better to communicate. So that that's uh, kind of the, the four things I wanted to mention. Uh, so it's in my great opinion that those that absolutely have uh, – you know, lost their business um, and jobs permanently due to this, it's going to be like the phoenix rising from the ashes because iron sharpens iron. You know, we grow the most during difficult times in our lives, and I believe that those people will be better when I when they come out of it um, the, the right way. They're going to have, you know, it's going to be, it's really hard right now for a lot of people who are struggling, trying to figure it out, but it's causing their minds and their brains hopefully to create and come up with something better because humans that's kind of we have that um built into us right we want to survive <laughs> survival of the fittest uh so if they're disciplined in the drive in their heart to be better uh, out of it um i sure hope uh, that that happens but i do believe it will happen humans are amazing when it comes to rebounding from hardships absolutely amazing and and yet humans most are you know some of us we can be lazy as too though uh, so we're, we're, you get used to mundane status quo and allow ourselves to think, uh, you know, we're happy with the everyday lives when there's so much more out there. So maybe, you know, those who have lost, you will realize, you know, no, there's got to be something better out there. And the pandemic is forcing a lot of people to get out of the treadmill of life, of the, as I said before, and making them think of their lives, their short lives that we have, and realize, you know, are they doing what they really want to do? So, um, you know, take this opportunity and and do what you've always wanted to do. And if you don't know what that is, just explore. Uh, read, you know, uh, talk to people, communicate, um, and just do it. Just believe in yourself and believe that you can do it. You can do anything. Uh, so the, I have a quote this week, and it's from Warren Buffett. If you buy things you don't need, soon you will need to sell things that you need. Uh you know, or you won't be able to buy things you need. So, if you again, if you buy things you don't need, soon you will need to sell things you need. That's so, a good point. Yeah. It's a very good point. Well, I guess we should take a break right now, a quick break, and then we'll come back with more in just a couple moments. Uh, how good. can people get a hold of you if they need to uh, get questions answered and things like that? MichelleCummins.ca. We're back with more right after this. And we are back with the Cummins Real Estate Group show with Michelle Cummins and myself, Curtis Pope. Now, Michelle, we want to have a look at the market here. What's going on? I know that there's still some houses being sold and listed and things like that. What's happening? Yeah, like uh, there's a couple multiple offers that I was involved with even this week. And I know Maple Ridge has been having some uh, multiple offers. So in some areas, you know, there's still life happening. So I have this last seven uh, days, so this last week, stats for new listings and sold compared to the week prior. So I'm going to start with Surrey. And new listings for Surrey for this past seven days is 158 new listings, and that's up from the week prior that had 128 listings, so 30 more listings. So that's uh, pretty good. And sold for Surrey this last seven days, seven sold, which is down from the previous seven days, which was 28. Uh, So Langley, new listings, is 54 this week, and the week before was 86. So the new listings are down in Langley. Sold the last seven days, zero. Nothing sold in Langley, uh, but the previous week, 14 sold. And in Abbotsford, new listings, 40, which is pretty close to the previous week, which had 43 new listings. But sold in Abbotsford, only one this last week, and previous to that, the week before, was 13. 
Mission had new listings 16 this last week, and the previous seven days was 16, so exactly the same amount of listings, amazingly enough, and sold this last week one. Previous week was four. Maple Ridge, new listings 31. Previous week was 34, so almost the same. Sold were zero this last week, though, and the week before was six. Chilliwack, new listings, 40, and the previous week was 62, so listings are down in Chilliwack. Sold are four last week, and the previous week was 11. Now, I know the numbers seem slightly different than last week when I reported it, but because the way the real estate board, when I get my stats on, on the Friday, um, yesterday, uh, it, it, it's depending on when I get the stats and then when they post it at the end or the beginning. So just they could be slightly off. Uh, But that gives you a really good idea of kind of what's happening. And it does appear that the market's stronger this last week than it was the last two weeks prior to it, which is which is pretty amazing. I I wasn't sure if we were going to be lower this last week than the previous two, you know, two weeks keep on going down. But we actually are a bit stronger this last week. So, um, yeah, so we'll 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 see what happens uh, with that. What do you think of that, Curtis? Well, I think it's interesting that, you know, the, the houses are still being put on the market. And like you were mentioning, you had multiple offers on homes that are for sales. So the value is still there. The, people are not losing, uh, you know, in money on the uh, the end result anyway. Exactly. Uh, the prices, like, haven't changed. And I know the last couple of weeks we did have some, some try to come in and think that, you know, okay, prices are going to be down. But really, we're, you know, we're going to be coming out of this. And I think everyone knows that and in, in deep in their, their gut and in, in their heart, um, you know, and, and so sellers aren't desperate. I haven't seen any sellers out there that are desperate to give away their, their homes, you know, for rocket bottom prices. I mean, this area is an amazing area to live in. And with interest rates, the way they are, you know what, this is just an amazing uh, time. And this area like who doesn't want to live here people i know that live around the world and have places around the world they just always love here in in canada and especially our greater vancouver area here the fraser valley is just so beautiful i just love it here (laughs) yeah no we do live in paradise that's for sure when i'm on a conference call with people on tuesday and they're talking about how it's windy and snowing in sault Ste. marie ontario and in kingston and kitchener i'm going huh i wore shorts to work uh you know i almost feel guilty (laughs) <laughs> don't feel guilty i don't Just enjoy it <laughs> i don't in fact i rub it in every chance i can get oh that's great are you wearing shorts right now this no morning? today I, I i it was a little it was a little cooler this morning so i've got my jeans on today oh. hey thank you for listening to my rant uh earlier uh in the first segment i uh <laughs> going back to the service providers i did want to ask you though curtis uh who who has really stood out to you for service providing? Have you have you noticed the shift happening at all, like getting better service lately? Or uh, you like- know, I, I would say that yeah. I mean, I just you look at our own company, how we're handling things, and anybody that I've dealt with, yeah, people are, you know, they're they're taking Doctor Bonnie's advice and they're being kind. I think that's the big thing, and that people are going that extra mile for folks, and they're, uh, they, you know, it's it's a lot easier to try to make somebody's day a little better with a smile and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a good attitude than to go in somewhere and, and, and not, right? So it seems that people in general are, are you know, we, we get, we're all in this together. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I, I, and I really do feel that we're all going to be better coming out of it. We're going to uh, service our clients and our customers even better, and we're going to respect each other more and care about each other more. And it's great seeing that all happening right now so Mm -hmm. absolutely for sure yeah well thank you so much uh it was so great talking with you another great week and i hope you have a wonderful weekend everyone yes absolutely you and and your family have a great one and you too and i continue (laughs) celebrating uh uh, sir richard the chicken hearted no lion hearted Uh, Sir Richard. <laughs> Sir Richard, uh, keep celebrating his birthday. And if people want more information about you and the services you provide as a top-notch real estate agent, what can they do? Well, I love celebrating things like the like the old days, like when they did for seven days or fourteen days. Why not just continue on for a week or two with celebration? But <laughs> anybody can reach me uh, through my website at michellecummins.ca. Just remember, at Richard's age, he can't celebrate that much. It'll hurt too much. (laughs) (laughs) Don't tell him you said that. Please do.
And be sure to listen in next week when we will talk more real estate in order to unlock your real estate potential on a show where real estate is maximized. Thanks for listening. Stay safe.